going to be in Matthew, the seventh chapter, in just a minute. And we are now, we're going to finish up our series in the Sermon on the Mount today and use it as a springboard into our next series, which is the promises of God. So this is going to kind of act as a in a dual role kind of fashion. So uh, I am excited about uh, this, uh, what we're going to share today. Um, let's see, what should I? Yeah, there it is, Christ positive. That's what, that's what we're going to be doing. What I'm going to do is I want to read this, and then we're going to jump back, and I'm going to talk about uh, a hurricane that happened a few years ago. Uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter, starting in the 24th verse, therefore, we'll talk about that word again, therefore, it's significant. Everyone who hears, that's a significant word, these words of mine, this is Jesus speaking, obviously, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and yet it didn't fall because it has a foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rains came down, and the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. In just a minute, I'm going to go back. We're going to talk about the hurricane. But I just want to look at the 28th and 29th verse. When Jesus had finished these sayings, these things, saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. Because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. And this is just a quick side note, just to let you know, Jesus was fearless. He spoke truth plainly, clearly, and boldly, no matter who was listening, no matter how popular or unpopular it would make him, he spoke truth. Didn't matter if he gained a great following, he wanted those who were going to follow to seriously follow him. And that's what Jesus was all about, all throughout his ministry. He was calling people to, to believe in him and calling people to follow him. And so he did that in a fearless bold manner and sometimes he actually said things not to get more people to come he said things to drive them away because he wanted the people who were gonna, really going to follow him to follow him and if they were not going to follow him he just thought they would be better off not acting like they were just that's the truth and there are people today in the church in America that they are there for what they can get from Jesus other than salvation they're there so they can get the stuff, the wealth, the power. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. The comfort, we'll talk about that. In 2018, there was a huge storm. It's called Hurricane Michael. And it wiped out, it, it, uh, it wiped out very much uh, Central America, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, Southeast United States, especially the Florida Panhandle and Georgia, Eastern United States, Eastern Canada, and some other areas. So when that storm came, it had at times sustained winds of one minute or more of 160 miles an hour. And when that wind came, it devastated things in its path. And, uh, What happened, well, go back for a minute, I, I, yeah, one more, there it is, good. So I want you to look, you see all around that house, see that house, that white house, see that? That, that house was in that storm. So were all the houses all around it. 160 miles an hour, not even the roof came off. That's amazing to me. I don't know. Do you think that's pretty amazing? This huge storm that went on for days and it withstood the storm. Now go to the next one. 
All right, and there it is. There is that house. That house had a name. I forgot the name of the house. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it, that house, and then there were some houses that had been built by Habitat for Humanity that were built in such a fashion that they would withstand the storm. They were built on a foundation. They were put together in a manner and in a way that would keep it from being blown away because of where it was. The other houses around, now we go to the next one. This is what happened to it. That's what happened. Because there were many, many houses there through the, on, in that storm all over the place that did not withstand the storm. And so I want you to just have that as a picture in your mind as we begin to talk about what Jesus says here about how you build and where you build. So there's some things that we know for sure. Here's what we know for sure. Based on what Jesus just said, here's what we know for sure. We have a choice. He's given us a choice. There's not one of you here that was forced to believe on Jesus. None. Nobody. We do that because we respond to the grace and the mercy and the love of Jesus Christ. We come into the kingdom because we choose that. We have a choice. In the last portion of the seventh chapter, there were three um, different examples that Jesus uses about making choice. One was, I spoke on it a few weeks ago, the wide and the narrow gate. You get to choose what gate you're going to go in. And if you're going to, it's real easy to go through the narrow gate, uh, the wide gate, but the narrow gate takes some focus and some effort on our part that we focus and there's a certain way you go in and there's a certain way you walk and a certain way you live if you want to walk, go through the narrow gate. Secondly, there's a good tree and the bad tree. So what kind of tree do we want to be? Because it's all based on what we are founded on. It's all based on the seed that we've been planted with and it's all based on the soil that, it, that in our hearts that it comes to. It's all based on that. The wide gate, the narrow gate, the good tree, the bad tree, the good fruit, the bad fruit. And finally, today, we're given a choice of how and where we're going to build. So here's the thing. Everybody chooses. Every person in this room, every person out in those streets, every person in the world chooses. Now you would say to me, now, not everybody chooses to serve Jesus, true. And some people don't choose anything, but by not choosing, you choose. When you don't choose, you choose. You either choose to follow Jesus Christ and to love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, or when you don't choose that, you choose. You choose not to. Understood? So by not choosing, and these are the choices that we, we've been given. We have some, we know for sure that we have a choice. And by not choosing, we choose. So number one thing that we know from what Jesus has said, we have a choice. Nobody's making you be here. Praise God you're here today. This is a great turnout for the Sunday after Easter. Praise God. And I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad we're together to worship God and to enjoy the word of God together. So you chose to be here today, and I'm thankful for that. Some of you joining on Facebook Live, you chose to do that. I'm ecstatic that you did. So one thing we know is we have a choice. We get to choose what we're going to do with our lives. And we'll get back to that, what you're going to choose and how you choose it. But I got to tell you, this, this idea that we choose, that we make a choice to follow Jesus or not follow Jesus. And I don't know if I hit this later, but incidentally, you actually choose to do what Jesus wants you to do every day or you don't choose it. 
Now in that, I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about doing what Jesus wants you to do. We were just talking about that this morning. Here's the second thing we know for sure. Second thing we know. One is we all have a choice. So whoever you're sitting next to, just tell them, hey, guess what? You have a choice. Do that. Say, you have a choice. Elijah stands up before all of those multitudes of Baal and he goes, he says, choose this day who you will serve. If it's God, serve him. If not, so be it. Choose this day who you will serve. The second thing we know is the storm's coming. Just hear me on this, please. The storm is coming. Some of you are thinking right now, well, you're crazy, Coach Nix, because a storm came this last year. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah, I'm saying somewhat. We were faced with difficulty, faced with a pandemic, faced with hundreds of thousands of deaths, faced with riots, faced with contention. Yeah, yeah, I got to tell you, we've faced a few things. But the storm's coming. You've seen, a, you've seen a little bit of the precursor of the storm. That's what I believe. Now, is that good news? It can be. I'll tell you how and why. The storm's coming. Jesus said in John, the 16th chapter, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Talking to the disciples. In this world you will have trouble. Here's a promise from Jesus. In this world, you're going to have trouble. Every say, praise God. That's what Jesus said. In this world, you're going to have trouble. He, he never came to live to a sinless life and to lay his life down so that we could live in comfort. Now, we have lived in comfort. And yes, we face difficulty from time to time. But I'm telling you, the storm's coming. In this world, we will have trouble. And if we're not ready for it, we're going to be like that last house. It's important to build correctly. We'll get to that in a minute. See, we always try to pray the storm away. Oh, don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We try to pray the storm away. We try to pray, oh God, please don't make me experience this. Let me have it easy. I pray that. Lord, I don't want, I don't want to deal with that. You know what's really awesome? We're not the only ones. Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, if it be possible for this cup to pass from me, let that happen. But nevertheless, God, Father, not my will, but your will. I, I don't think it's a bad thing sometimes just to pray, God, I don't want to go through a hard time. Nevertheless, God, I know you're going to carry me through because you are where my hope is. And when I say the storm's coming, we haven't experienced persecution like they are experiencing in other countries. Did you know that in China right now, right now, as we talk, Christians are being detained, isolated, and then tortured so that they will deny the faith? No, I mean they are being detained, put in separate rooms, kept separate from other people. You think you, isolation was bad for you this last year? Try that. And they are tortured alone so that they will deny the faith. That's a storm, folks. That's a storm. And I don't know what's more st what storms are coming up for us. Don't know. But I absolutely believe the longer we go, 
the more storms and the more severe they will be. You don't have to agree with me. I'm fine with that. But when I read the Word of God, and you read the book of Revelation, it's absolutely true. It ends up good. God wins. Everybody say amen. amen. Absolutely awesome because God wins. But you read what happens before that, and some people think that Jesus is going to come before the tribulation, in the middle of the tribulation, or at the end of the tribulation. I don't know. I, I am not that great of a theologian. All I know is Jesus is going to come. And we need to be ready if we go through persecution. Because the storm's coming. Lastly, so you, you have a choice. The storm is coming. And because the storm is coming, we need to choose wisely. Choose wisely how you build. Choose wisely what you build with. Choosing does not mean just thinking about it or talking about it. Choosing means doing it. Choosing Jesus means to do it. It means to follow him. It means to love him with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength, which means on my part, I am part of that process. That means I read the word. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm praying. I'm seeking, I'm not just praying, but seeking relationship with Jesus. I want to hear his voice every single day. I pray to Jesus, Lord, I want to hear your voice and follow you. I want to hear your voice and follow you. I put on the helmet of salvation. For me, the helmet of salvation is me to hear the voice of God and follow him, to see others through his eyes and to have on the mind of Christ. And I'm just telling you, every day I pray that. I want to hear Jesus because without hearing his voice, I'm banging up against walls. James says, don't merely listen to the word in first chapter of James. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word and does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Hmm. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, will be blessed in whatever he does. When we receive Christ into our hearts, all our sins are forgiven. We are forgiven. The blood of Jesus forgives us. It covers our sin. First John says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. And so, and so when we come into Christ, and how many, can any of you in here remember when you first came to Jesus, of that experience? Anybody? I'm not going to have you say anything. I'm just, don't be afraid. Yeah, so when you first accepted Jesus, when that happened, what, I don't know, did I experienced a freedom. I experienced a life that I hadn't had before. Because I was headed for death both ways. And I was so thankful that Jesus saved me and delivered me. He, he saved me out of the domain of darkness and transferred me into the king, into the son, into the kingdom of the son that he loves. So looking into the truth and then walking that out is crucial if you're going to build on the rock. If you're going to withstand the storm, you've got to be built on the rock. We find Jesus praying in the 17th chapter of John. Father, sanctify them. Who? The, 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 the disciples and all of us all through history. Sanctify them. The word sanctify means to cleanse, to make right, to clean. Sanctify them through thy truth. What's truth? Thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. And if we don't know the word of God, you can't, how can you walk in truth if you don't know the word of God? Anything built on a foundation other than truth will get swept away like that house we saw. So I will tell you that 
here at Valley Christian Church, and I know other churches, but I will speak for this church because I know the guys that normally teach or preach. I can speak for all of our leadership. Our entire, all the elders, our pastors, we all, when we teach, we consider it of utmost priority to teach truth. We consider it of utmost priority to teach truth the way it's written in the word of God and to make sure that what you're hearing is truth and not idea that we do hold each other, uh, each other count, accountable. So if I teach something wrong, I'll hear about it. And I would never, and Brad and Doug and no, but none of us would ever intentionally teach any error, anything in error. We would not do that. Because none of us are trying to build our own kingdom. We are so committed to building the kingdom of the living God. That's what we're about. But I got to tell you, we've got to be held accountable. We're not just entities unto ourselves going and teaching whatever we want to teach, however we want to teach it. So let me say something to you. Please, I'm begging you, don't ever, ever, ever just depend on what somebody else says. Because somebody else says it doesn't make it so. Unless it says it in the Word of God. The word of, if the Word of God says it, it is truth. Everybody say, amen. amen. If the Word of God says it, it is, everybody say, truth. That's what we want. And we've got to be held accountable, all of us, to teach truth. First Timothy says, for the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine, but instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itchy ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside the mess. I'm not going to give any names, but if anybody's teaching anything that isn't validated by God's word, it is not truth. And, if, and you can't afford to embrace it, to listen to it, I would, I would say to you, run from it. And that's why you need to know what the truth is. You can't come on Sunday morning, and I'm talking, or Brad, or Doug, or someone else. You can't just depend on that. You can't. You've got to know the truth yourself. Now, we'll teach truth to the best of our ability, with all of our hearts. But we all need to know what the, what the Word of God says. So I am asking you, all of us to know the truth. Get into the Word. Read the Word. Memorize the Word. Know what the Word of God says for yourself. One of, the, one of, the, one of the, my passions this year is to get all of us reading God's Word together. That's why we're doing the Gospel of John. And next week we will be in the 12th chapter. We just finished the 11th chapter this week and we'll go to the 12th chapter. We send that out on Facebook. We, uh, we I th is there things on the tables for it? Yeah. You've got, if you don't get on Facebook, and if you want me to email it to you or whatever, I want us to read the Word of God together. I want us to know the truth together. I want all of us to know. So when the storms hit, and they will, We'll be ready. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, my favorite chapter in the whole Bible. We're not going to read the whole chapter right now. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of doctrine and teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. Instead, Speaking the truth in love, we will grow up in all things who's to him, the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament. It grows and builds itself up in love as everybody does their part. Conclusion. Here's what you got to choose. If you, want, if you want to be built on a solid foundation, here's your part. You ready for this? I'm going to go through these really quickly. 
Here's what you got to have. Number one, if you don't believe, you got to believe. Number one, you got to believe that Jesus is who he said he is. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You got to believe that. That's where it starts. Secondly, you receive him. Ask Jesus into your heart. Take an action. Jesus, not only do I believe you, I receive you in my heart, and I want you to change my life. Everybody say amen to that. Yes. Thirdly, repent. Here's what we don't hear much about, folks. We don't hear much about repenting because it's not popular. Well, I got to tell you, I don't care if it's popular. It's part of the gospel. Part of the gospel is believing, receiving, and repenting. What does that mean? Means I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to change my direction. I'm going to go walk at Jesus regardless of what costs. And I believe his word is truth. And I believe that he is the Lord. I believe he's coming back again. I don't know when. But I am going to, to repent and have a change of mind. Think differently. Look differently. By knowing the word of God. And by knowing Jesus. And let, finally be baptized. Publicly declare your, that Jesus is your Lord. And follow him. Those are the four. Believe, receive, repent, and be baptized. And once you do that. Seek, set, surrender, and serve. That's it. How do you build your life on the rock? How do you do that? You believe, you receive, you repent, you're baptized. And then you seek him every day. You set your heart and mind on him every day. In the, through the word and in, and in prayer. You surrender your heart and your life. Deny yourself. Take up your cross every day and follow Jesus. That's how, this is how you build your house on a rock. You want to be ready to destroy him, this is what you do. And finally, whatever you do in a word or deed, do it as unto Jesus. Live your life for Jesus. Live your life for Jesus. So I, I'm looking around the room and I, I'm just going to assume right now all of you have believed on Jesus, but that may not be the case. Or there may be people watching that I don't know about. They don't know Jesus. I'm telling you that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and you believe that. Romans 10.10, 10, read that. I quoted it a minute ago. You believe and receive him, and I'm asking all of us, just keep repenting and walk towards Jesus. Let's pray. Now, Lord, I, I love the hope of this promise. Well, the hope of this promise, Lord, is that when we build on you, we're going to withstand the storm. And I know, God, the storm's coming. Thank you for showing us and telling us. And now, Lord, for every person who has never believed on Jesus in this room and watching, I pray right now that they would believe on you. The way you do that is just Lord, tell Jesus you want him in your heart. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Help us to be a church of your word. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be a church that is passionately in love with you and your word. Get us ready, Lord, for any storm that would come. Help us to do that, Lord. For we pray in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, I just want to urge you, like, if you've never been baptized and you're a Christian, please talk to Brad or Doug or I. Please do that. If you, if, and if you have never believed in Jesus, if you're, if you're watching on Facebook, and you believed on Jesus today, if you want to know more about that, please call us. Call Doug, call Brad. They'll tell you. So, we, or you can Facebook us. I'm telling you, this is, this is huge for us. It is a promise. The promise is we established on a rock, we build a strong, strong house. That's what we want to do. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand, please. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound.
that say a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but Get on the rock and stay there. That's it. Amen? Yeah.